Whether we're talking about your PC, your car, or even a really fancy coffee maker, anything with a microprocessor needs some kind of operating system in order to do anything more useful than sit there and look pretty. But what do they do exactly? Well, in a nutshell, an operating system is a piece of software that acts as a liaison between a system's hardware through some other software bits called the kernel and drivers, and the software applications through which the user, that's you, interacts with the aforementioned hardware. And while all operating systems have, on a fundamental level, the same objectives, protecting user security by preventing malicious code from exploiting your hardware, allocating system resources, resources like memory to complete the user's required tasks as efficiently as possible, and in the case of more complex ones, providing a platform on which compatible programs can run and interact with the user, be it through a keyboard, touchscreen, or even a steering wheel, there are two fundamental ways that these tasks can be managed. Let's start with an example that you're likely to find in your pocket. No, not that. Your phone. If you're a caveman, it's possible that you're still using a single tasking operating system. These, as you might have cleverly figured out, are only capable of running a single program at a time, which is one of the reasons you couldn't browse your contacts while playing games on your old Nokia brick. But hold on a second, Linus. I remember when my snake high score run was disrupted by a pesky phone call from my mother. Isn't that kind of multitasking? Actually, that's called an interrupt in all operating systems, even single tasking ones, override less important functions when their environment changes. So a real world example of this would be if a simple operating system like the one on your fancy coffee maker stopped a brewing cycle to give the user an alert to change the filter to a DRM approved one. Or here's a good analogy, if a car came barreling through the front of your house while you were cooking, your brain's operating system knows only one of those things can be dealt with at a time, so it tells you to turn off your cooking elements, it saves the in-progress state of your meal in your memory so you can come back to it later, and then tells you to focus on all the screaming, burning people in your living room until you can return to it. So now let's move on to modern multitasking operating systems like Android and Windows. These use a process called time sharing to split resources, allowing more than one thing to be done at once, or so it would appear. Let's use our human brain analogy again, where this time the doorbell and your phone both ring at the same time. Both tasks with similar priority rankings that cannot be completed one at a time without ending up with a voicemail Hello, or a package man. delivery <laughs> notice on your door. So you answer your phone and say, Hello, just a second. Oh, yeah. You right. open the door to find out it's a sexy DHL driver, continue your phone conversation while the courier prepares the paperwork, then you sign for the package, close the door, and continue your conversation. If you're honest with yourself, you haven't really devoted your full proper attention to either of these tasks, but by regularly scheduling interrupts, remember that word from before, to each of these tasks, you can devote resources as needed to each of them so they appear to be being completed at the same time. And multitasking operating systems work in much the same way. But of course, this video mostly ignores the actual topic I meant to address when it was originally scripted, which is what are some of the different types of operating systems and how do they differ? So let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. Speaking of things you might want to see, my face after I shave with Dollar Shave Club razors. Oh, what, you want me to actually tell you what Dollar Shave Club is? I bet thought it was pretty self-explanatory at this point. You get razors and other bathroom supplies shipped directly to your door for only a few bucks a month. They're high-quality products for way less than what you would pay at the store. So they got the razors, they got the Dr. Carver shave butter, which goes on clear. They got their One Wipe Charlies, which are peppermint-scented face wipes. Just kidding, they're for your butt. Wipes for men. They've got their post-shave moisturizer and travel sizes as well. There's a variety of razors all the way up to the six blade executives and did I say executives no no we don't have six blade executives here just six blade executive razors so there's no vibrating handles or other nonsense like that just high quality razors and head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus to sign up and join the club it's available in the US Canada Australia and New Zealand
So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it blew chunks. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possible. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that noise.